for the last several weeks, for most of this year at this point, we, we've really been trying to take some time to prepare ourselves and to pray for what we're calling revival, for a fresh movement of, of, of God's Spirit in, in our midst, for, for, for maybe a fresh, new, deeper awareness of God's Spirit in our midst. And that amazing God that, that the, the band just, just sang about and, and talked about, we're, we're praying and hoping and longing for that God to come and touch us in powerful, powerful ways, new ways, individually and as a congregation. What I've been trying to help you understand is, as, as, as I've been asking you to pray every single day, and don't stop, and if you haven't started, start, just, just start. But I've been asking you to pray for the church, to pray for me, pray for the leaders, pray for God to do great things, and then come with expectant hearts. Just come believing that God's going to start doing things that, that maybe a little bit of what we saw earlier in, in this service will happen more and more frequently. Just spontaneous moments that feel right, that are right, where, where God is leading us. Just pray for those kinds of things. But, but I want you to understand that, that underneath it all, laying that foundation for everything that happens is the love of God. It's what we've been singing about. It is the love of God that, 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 that led God to us in the first place. It's the love of God that creates the relationship and keeps it strong. It's the love of God. It is, it is because of God's love that he's here now and, and reaches out and touches us. And so the more we understand that love, the, the more we know what to pray for. And the more we understand that love, the more we long for what might be missing in some of our lives. I've been talking about, for a while, the, the, the unimaginable, unexplainable, unconditional love of God. And, and last week, I, I ventured into dangerous territory, but Patty wasn't here, you know. Because the truth is, a lot, we're human beings. And so we think in human terms, and, and we, we see human things. We, we, all we have are human words to, to describe the, the really indescribable. So oftentimes, the best way to get into an understanding of God is to start with things that we, we can kind of picture and understand a little better. So I, I, I kind of talked about Patty a little bit. And if you remember, last, last week I was sharing that, that when, when we first started courting one another and, and beginning to realize that, 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 you know, maybe there was a little more than just a friendship going on, it started scaring me a little bit. I didn't understand this thing. I could, I could understand pretty easily why I loved Patty. That, that kind of made sense to me. What I couldn't really figure out is why she loved me. In, in fact, I, was, I, was, I, could, I could think of all kind of reasons why, why if she got to know me a little deeper, she would just cut and run real fast. And so, and so as I shared last week, my, my, uh, my way to resolve that was to try even harder, just to work at it, to, to um, try to court her. Not, not that I was good, I, and that was part of the problem. I knew I wasn't good at this kind of stuff. But to work at it a little harder, to try to earn her, her, her respect, to earn her love, to, to be worthy of that, to deserve that love. And I've, as I mentioned last, last week, it took, it took quite a long time for me to begin to understand, and even longer for me to accept that I didn't have to work at it that hard. And in fact, for this, this really strange, unexplainable reason, I didn't have to work at it at all. For some reason, Patty was beginning to love me, period. Unconditionally, as I was. And what a freeing revelation that was for me. Patty loved me unconditionally, accepted me as I was. Well, now I've got to go on and tell you the rest of the story because I don't want you to think for one moment that that meant that Patty was going to let me stay the way I was. It, it, didn't, it didn't work that way. It, it, it never really does, does it? I don't want you to think that Patty was trying to reform me. In fact, it's, it, it's, it's, it's something much deeper, much more important than that. Never in our 30 or 32 years now, I guess, of, of relationship where we've known each other, never once 
Have I ever felt that Patty was trying to reform me? To reform somebody, in my mind, is to change them. Patty always, at every moment of our relationship, has accepted me as I have been at that moment. She was trying to help me, though, at every moment and continues to do it, not to reform or to change me. She fell in love with me, not someone else, but to help me be the best I can be. And there's a huge difference. It wasn't like Patty had this ideal person in her mind, and she kind of settled on this less than ideal person, and she's been working ever since to reform me so that someday I will come up to her ideal and everything will be good. She's smarter than that. She knows that's not the way it works. That's not it. She accepted me, accepts me as I am, good and bad, strengths and weaknesses at every moment as I am. But she's constantly working to help me become the best me I can be. And I've got to tell you, at times I think that's been a hard road for her to follow. I've had a lot to learn, and I've had a lot to change, and that's all I'm going to say about that. What, what, the lessons that she has had to teach me, that's going to be between us. Now, to be fair, to be fair to myself, I've got to say that for 30 or 32 years, I've kind of done the same thing with her. I, I've accepted her, I believe, as she is, for who she is. But, 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 but I hope, Patty, that I've helped you become the best person you can be, that I've worked at that, not to reform, not to change, but just to help us. Now, here's, here's the thing. Here's what, here's what we've seen happen. Over those years, as, as we work together to, to, to become the best we can be, which sometimes means challenging and, and prodding and pushing and sometimes just loving and accepting and being patient with one another, we have little by little been drawing closer and closer to one another. That's exactly what the words mean in, in that traditional wedding, uh, wedding uh, uh, ritual when it says, and the two shall become one flesh. And, and we begin drawing closer and closer to one another. In the process, our love grows stronger. It, 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 it begins to deepen. And, and our relationship becomes stronger. Now, you didn't come. I, I understand this. You didn't come to hear me talk about, about me. You probably hate as much as I do, listening to preachers who just every Sunday just string one personal story after another. I know we came here to, to talk about the love of God, to experience it, to, to think about it and, 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 and listen to it. And we've already seen some of that. But as I said, when we are at our best, our human love is going to at the very least be a, a, a reflection of the deeper, grander love that God has for us. So sometimes when you start with something, even if you've not personally experienced it yourself, an example like, like, like I shared with Patty and me, that's something you can at least begin, you can understand that. And that, that opens the door to begin to understand something that goes so much deeper. You see, what we're really wanting to focus on is that unimaginable, unexplainable, unconditional love of God. The love that reaches out to us. The love that accepts us at every step, at every moment in our life as we are at that moment. That's the unconditional part. But I can't stop there. It's absolutely true. It's our only hope that God loves us so much He accepts us as we are. We don't have to earn his love. We don't have to become good and perfect first for God to love us. He accepts us as we are, but that same God loves us too much to let us stay the way we are. God's not out to reform us. We're already his children. But he's going to help you and me become the very best we can be. Of all human beings on this earth, Patty knows me best of all. She, she knows my potential better than any other. She, she can, because of that, lead me and, and push me to, to, to strive to be my best. Of all, of all entities, of all, however, God knows me best. God knows you best. God knows your potential. God knows his plans for you and for me. 
And that God who loves us and accepts us at every age, at every point in our life, that same God wants to help us become the best we can be. And that is the transformational nature of God's holy love. The, the, the passage of Scripture that comes to mind that, that, that really speaks out to me clearest on this is 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Very familiar verse to uh, many. But therefore, if anyone is in Christ Jesus, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. Now when you read that verse, and, and the way Paul put it, it sounds like something instantaneous happens. The old has passed away, the new has come. And in, and in one sense, that's absolutely true. If you are in Christ Jesus, that is, if you've given yourself to this relationship of love with God, you instantly change in your relationship. You now are a child of the living God. You are not what you were, you are something new. But I hate to add to Scripture, it's kind of a scary thing, but, but let, me, let me offer something else that I think is equally true. If anyone is in Christ Jesus, they are becoming a new creation. The old is passing away, and the new is coming. I suspect that for many of you, just because I know it to be true for me, that's how I experience this transforming love. It's an ongoing process in my life. I know my relationship is different. That's the unconditional nature of God's love. But I know that I'm in a process of change. The transformational nature of God's love. What a blessing it is to know that God loves us so much. He accepts us as we are. What a great thing to know that God loves us so much He won't keep us the way we are. He's got big plans for you and me, for individuals and as a church. See, I think that's the heart of revival. The deepest levels of revival, it's about transformation. It's about change. It starts when we accept that great love of God, but it moves on from there. And that revival, when we begin to sense God's Holy Spirit moving and, 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 and wandering in our midst, and we see it, we begin to sense that something's different. We begin to somehow know that God loves us with his unimaginable love. We somehow, when the Spirit is moving in our midst, we just know that God has already accepted us with his unconditional love but we begin to realize that God is changing us with his transformational love. The Apostle Paul um, talked a lot about this in, where did I put my Bible? The Apostle Paul talked a lot about this in, in Romans chapter 12. And I want you to turn to that uh, for just a, just a moment. He had a chance in the book of Romans to really begin explaining himself and, and, and putting his thoughts together. And, and as he was thinking about the love, it, there are other places earlier in Romans where he talks about that. But I think this is where he begins to, to, to really focus on what we in Methodist terms called sanctification, the process of discipleship, of growing, of, of changing. But you'll hear the same kinds of words in here. So let me read just verses 1 and 2 for you right now. Therefore, I urge you, my brethren, in view of God's mercy, to offer your, offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God, for this is your spiritual act of worship. Now, let, me, let me just start here and, 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 and say this. I'm, I'm kind of paraphrasing a bit. Offer your bodies as living sacrifices. He's not talking about a physical sacrifice. He, he's, not, he's not really talking about physically offer yourselves. He's talking about a deep relationship. Offer your bodies, offer yourself to this relationship that God, that God has for you. Offer yourself as holy and pleasing. This is your spiritual act of worship. That means this is your sacrifice. This is the deepest gift you have to give yourself. 
give of yourself as fully and completely as you can to God. Then look at verse 2. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of the world, but now be transformed by the renewing of your mind. For then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. See, here's the next step. When, when, when you give yourself completely, Paul said when you give, give, give your bodies as living sacrifices, when you give yourself to this relationship of God, that this, this relationship of love, you've got to be open to change. So it says, don't be conformed to this world. Don't stay the way you world. Don't think like everyone else does. Don't think like you used to be. Be willing to be changed. And, and, and Paul says, first, by the transforming of your minds. Why that? Because when God begins to change the way you look at the world and you think about the world, when you begin to, way, to change the ways you think and see and feel, you can't help but begin to change the ways you act and the ways you talk and the ways you relate the transformation of your minds begins to change the heart. It begins to change everything else. Then, then you can prove, then you can test and approve God's will, and then you begin to see how good and perfect it is. Let me, again, let me, if, you, if you don't mind, let me just kind of do a little paraphrasing here. Because as, as I think about this, I see a cycle developing, a, a cycle that's so important and so powerful for us. I, I see this cycle where we give ourselves to God. It, it's, it's, it's all we do. We just open ourselves to God's great love for each one of us. We ask God to come in. We begin to experience his love. We open ourselves to the possibilities of change and transformation. And we begin to see little by little, over periods of time, sometimes in quick spurts, but most of the time in just small little steps, that God's changing the way we think and feel and speak and act in the world itself. He's changing our minds, transforming us. And as that happens, we begin to realize that we're drawing closer and closer and closer to God. Now, here's where, where, where the analogy of Patty and me falls apart completely. See, I said when, when Patty and I began to, to change, we, we began drawing closer to one another. We both changed. We both moved the middle. That's not what happens here. God doesn't conform to us. God doesn't transform. God is God. We begin changing and drawing closer to him. But once you get that analogy, once you understand that, it becomes similar again because the, the end result is we're going closer and closer to God. We begin to see his love in our life. We begin to see the change. We begin to prove by experience that what God says is real and true and begins to work in our life. Our love deepens. Uh, it draws us even closer, and that process, it just, it just feeds and builds upon itself. So what, in concrete terms, might that change look like in your life? What might it look like in this congregation? You and I can talk all day long about transformation, but if we don't know what to look for, if we don't know how to recognize it, you're not going to get it. And, and here again, in the same passage, Paul, Paul goes there. I want you to go home later today, or maybe in Sunday school class, whatever you want, but read this uh, chapter in its entirety today. Let God speak to you through it. He's just saying, by the transformation of your mind, you're going to prove what is good, and you're going to accept what is good from God, his good, perfect, pleasing will. But then in verse 9, he begins to give a clue on what that's going to be like. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honor one another above yourself. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with God's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and don't curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, 
but be willing to associate with people of low position. Don't be conceited. Don't repay evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everybody. And if possible, as far as depends on you, live at peace with everyone. And I spoke those words quickly because I want to go back to them. If you listen to those words, it sounds like, well, this is what we need to do in order to, to really understand God's love. We need to do this. And if you're not careful, you're going to fall into a trap. It's so easy. Where once again, we're trying to earn God's love. We're trying to be the kind of people God wants us to be. No. No, no, no. This is what God will change us into. This is the kind of person we can become. So let me paraphrase. When you begin, to, and, and just kind of follow along, I'm, 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 I'm going to do the best I can with this. But as, as you go along, as you begin to pray for God's Spirit to move in our midst, as you begin to see our church change, as you begin to see each other change, as you begin to feel that you are changing, you're going to realize, you can begin to see that your love is becoming more and more sincere. You mean what you say. You, you don't tolerate evil, you hate it. You're going to find that you're wanting to cling to the good. You're going to care about one another, really care. You're going to have prayer for one another. You're going to be devoted to one another in brotherly love. And you're going to honor others. You're going to stop thinking so highly of yourself. You're going to see that you really, really do honor the other person deeply, sincerely. You're not going to lack in zeal. In fact, your excitement level is just going to rise and rise and rise. And you're going to find that in hopeful moments of your life, you feel this deep inner joy. And in the difficult moments of life, you're going to still somehow have hope. You're going to be patient. And you're going to really, really want to pray. You're going to find that when God's Spirit is moving in your midst, that, that giving, giving of yourself, time, talents, money, all of it, it's, it's so important because you want, to, you want to serve the other person. In fact, you really want to help those in need. With God's Spirit in your midst, you're going to look at the people who've hurt you, and you're not going to curse them anymore. You're going to bless them. You're going to love the people who've caused you pain. You're going to rejoice when others rejoice. You're going to feel an empathy that you've never felt before. When you see people mourning, you're going to want to get up and you're going to want to pray with them. It's going to feel like the right thing. You're going to find there's a harmony that's binding us together. A harmony that goes deeper than you've ever seen before. And you're not going to be proud about your life. You're going to want to associate with everyone. You're going to see the face of Christ in each person. You'll never again, when the Spirit is moving in your midst, want to repay evil for evil. You'll be careful always to do the right. Do you see it? Do you understand what Paul's saying? He's talking about deep change. And that is not anything that you and I can do for ourselves. It is not something we can go out and practice and, and, and get good at. It's, it's, it's something that's going to come. It is a deep transformation. This is the kind of person you and I become when the Spirit of God is flowing in our midst. And better, it's the kind of church we become when we're deeply praying and deeply hoping and longing for this. It's the kind of church we become when God's Spirit is moving in our midst. I believe that's what you want. How could you not want that? Pray for revival. Pray to know God's love. Pray to be transformed more deeply than you thought possible. Pray that God will change you, change me. Make us the best person we can be. We've got places to go. We're not going to, if it's all right, we're not going to close with, 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 with the song because we've, we've had so many things going on. In, in, instead, I'd like you to do something. Let, let's do this. Would, would all of you stand for a moment? And just grab the hand of the people around you. There should be no aisles, so kind of move in toward the center. Everybody just, just be grabbing. No, no, no aisle here. Just, just, just grab hold of somebody. And Patty, Patty, you come grab hold of my hand, okay? That's, 
<laughs> we, we deserve that, I think. So. <laughs> and let's just join together. This is our song of praise to God. Let's join together. Lord, we stand before you, united by your spirit united with one another by your love, united in the journey we are a part of because of your transforming love, your transforming nature, because of your holy presence in our midst. Change us, O oh Lord. Make us ever new. Change us, O oh God, and help us to become like you. Oh, put that on our hearts, God. Give us your hope. Touch us. And God... Every moment, every day, we give you our praise. Amen. Go in peace. Amen.